Hi everybody, welcome to a quarterfinals edition of Games Central presented by Bear Complex. Get better. I'm Sean Woodland with Annie Sakamoto as we kick off day two of our coverage of the quarterfinal rounds. And uh, after day one, what stood out to you? Well, it is no surprise, Sean, to see Tia Toomey yeah. or on top after she accidentally won yeah, the Open. Right. Uh, but I have to say, I am so impressed by the young guns of Mallory O'Brien and Emma Carey. You know, I think we, we talked about earlier um, that, that the quarterfinals was going to be a test where the elite were really going to start to mm -hmm. separate themselves. To see both of these ladies still on top is highly impressive to me. Let's take a look back at what happened on day one of competition and the top scores for the women in a test uh, number one. And you mentioned Tia Toomey Orr, and she put up the fastest time in the world. Six minutes, 27 seconds. Carrie Pierce was five seconds back of her, and Tia Toomey Orr was a minute and one second faster than Michelle Baznet out of Africa. Meanwhile, in test number two, once again, guess who? Tia Toomey Orr, the top time of 14 minutes, 37 seconds. Fee Sagafi was the top in North America with a time of 14 minutes and 46 seconds. Well, let's take a look at the overall standings after two tests and day number one, and we will start in Africa and Asia. And remember the top 30 men and women advancing to the semifinal round out of the quarterfinals from each of these continents. Uh, in Africa, Michelle Moran leads the way and four out of the five women in the top five are from South Africa. In Asia, it's Yuko Sakiyama who leads there after two events. Over in Europe and North America, the top 60 women advancing out of Europe and the top 120 advancing uh, out of North America. And it's a Norway and Iceland battle in the top five for Europe and in North America. Carrie Pierce and Haley Adams are first and second. And Annie, you mentioned it, some of the youngsters impressive, especially Mal O'Brien, third overall after two events. Meanwhile, Oceania and South America, the top 30 from both of those continents advancing. No shock here, Tia Toomey or your leader in Oceania and Cara Saunders uh, right behind her. And meanwhile, in South America, two Argentinians at the top of the leaderboard, Sasha Nieves and Melina Rodriguez, and then two Brazilians in the top five as well, Lari Kuna and Amanda Fasuma. For full leaderboards on all the continents, head to games.crossfit.com. But let's talk again about uh, Tia Toomey Orr, you mentioned that she mistakenly uh, won the World Wide Open. Hasn't really even been training for competition. What she's doing is downright scary here. Right. We talked about for test one, you know, you didn't only have to be fast on that. You had to be darn near perfect in your performance to get the best time. And that is exactly what Toomey did. She had absolutely no mistakes on test one. And then test two, she was incredibly consistent in all of her movements. Even with a minor penalty, she still put up not just the best time in Oceana, but the best time mm. overall. So in typical Tia fashion, she is still just wowing the pants off of all of us, yeah. I think. Well, and speaking of that, Mal O'Brien is someone that has had our attention you know, at the, since the beginning of the Open. And she is passing every test that has been thrown at her so far. Yeah, I mean, I said it yesterday. She is the real mm -hmm. deal. Um, you know, after the first two tests, uh, she, had a, she, she was doing great. She yeah. was in, I think, second or third place. Twelfth on test one, second on test two. And this is against a field of games veterans yeah. in North America. So to be there after the first two tests, super impressive. Test number three is what kicked off day number two. And this one had just two movements in it. We had 120 wall ball shots and then a 120 calorie row. This is for time and the women using a 14 pound ball to a nine foot target. And the time cap here is just 15 minutes. I know this is one of your favorite <laughs> events, but uh, what's, what is the key to being Good, not only good at this event, but also putting up a really good score. Well, I think first and foremost, there, you need to have a willingness to suffer, <laughs> right? Because you're, you're not going to fail a wall ball shot. And if you do, it's not going to cost you a lot. And it, once you're on the rower, you can't stop. You have mm -hmm. to just keep pulling. So really, it comes down to a, a willingness to suffer. But beyond that, I think it, it's about having really big sets on those wall balls. If you're going to have a top time and being able to hold a really good pace on that rower. So I'm going to say for the ladies, it's got to be north of 900 or a thousand calories wow. per hour if you are really going to truly get a top time in this in this test. We are about to watch four women who definitely have a lot of the attributes that you just talked about here uh, throw down in test number three. Samantha Briggs, we all know what she can do, 39 years old uh, out of Europe and, and still going strong. Ellie Turner at 23 out of Oceana and then two other Europeans along with Sam Briggs, Michaela Norman and uh, Annie Thorisdotter. What are you going to be watching here in this matchup? 
Well, I love this matchup. So we have two past champs, mm -hmm. in Annie Thor's daughter and Samantha Briggs, and then two names that most of us might not be familiar with in Ellie Turner and Michaela Norman. Well, Ellie Turner is unaffiliated. She's 23, she's young. We don't know much about her, but when I dug a little deeper on Michaela Norman, Guess what? 19.1, don't know if you remember mm -hmm. that. It was a test of what? Wall balls and rowing. Yep. And guess where Michaela Norman finished worldwide in that? In I'm that guessing workout. she did pretty well. She was first. So that'll do. So definitely not surprising <laughs> to see her, and I can't wait to see how she stacks up again with these ladies. Anytime Samantha Briggs is in a, a test where it requires engine and suffering, you've got to think that she's the favorite. Here. She is the mm -hmm. engine, right? And then again, like you said, when it comes down to suffering, I think that's what Sam is really good at. And just kind of this, uh, uh, you know, a little bit of a longer uh, event, and, and longer being, you know, not the two-minute range, but more of like the yeah. seven, eight, ten-minute range. Uh, I think this is where she thrives, and so I'd have have to look to Sam on this test. This episode of Game Central is sponsored by Bear Complex. Right now you can go to bearcomplex.com, use the promo code CrossFit20, and you get 20% off your order today. Test number three for the women. In the upper left, it's Ellie Turner out of Oceana. Next to her in the upper right is Michaela Norman. Bottom left, Sam Briggs. And bottom right, Annie Thorosatter. These are the athlete submitted videos. And remember, their scores are not confirmed until these videos are judged and looked over uh, by CrossFit staff. I love this. We have three Europeans and one mm -hmm. Oceana. Uh, we, it, that was something similar yesterday with the three North Americans in test two um, and then one Oceana. Uh, Kind of fun just to see where, you know, some of these tests, I don't know if it's that they favor them or um, they just come out this way. We well, mentioned, you know, Samantha Briggs in the bottom left. Anytime you just have to grit through some things and suffer, that's definitely right up Sam Briggs' alley. And I would really be surprised if you saw her break on these 120 wall balls. The boxes above their individual screens, that white bar will fill as they move through the test. So once that wall ball bar is completely white, that means that they will move on to the 120 calories. Look at how relaxed Sam looks on those wall balls. I mean, it's like, it's like the easiest thing, like an air squat. Early stages of this test, a little more than a minute in, and so far, everyone continues to go unbroken on these 120 wall balls. And, you know, for me, Sean, I was thinking about it. I mean, obviously, I wouldn't be with these top women, but, it, you know, as a shorter athlete, because every rep, is, oh, I almost have to jump. For me, I would have to break these up. And so I would have to do sets where I could recover quick enough uh, that I could get back on the wall. And that is something that probably a lot of other ladies in this field are thinking about. But these four athletes, obviously, you know, it looks like they're closing in on halfway through those wall balls, and I haven't seen one of them break yet. Yeah, looking at Ellie Turner in the upper left, it seems like her pace is just a little bit faster than everyone else's. Her uh, bar is about a little more than halfway through now, so probably 60 uh, reps in, if not a little bit more, for Ellie Turner on the wall balls, but still none of these four women have taken a break on this first set of 120 as we passed the two minute mark. I was just gonna say, Sean, I had said big sets. I didn't mean <laughs> one set. <laughs> a set of 120, yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, but I really think, again, to, to be the top time in this test, that is what it takes, is to do this in minimal sets. Ellie Turner, upper left, looks like she is still your leader. Annie Thor's daughter, bottom right probably in second, and then Briggs and Norman look like they're about neck and neck right now. And Norman, it looks like, uh, trains at CrossFit Nordic. I think that is uh, the gym where Camila Salmonson Hellman uh, used to train. And so, you know, assuming that Michaela is trained with Camila, who is a games veteran, that's in her favor. Annie Thoris' daughter on the bottom right, she is in the uh, black and white pants and black top. 
her pace looks like it might be picking up just a little bit. Now she's catching up with uh, Ellie Turner. Again, all these counts unofficial. Once that white bar is completely uh, to the right side of that wall ball rectangle, that means that they will be done with those 120 reps and then onto the rower. And still, no one has taken a break yet. No. And you can see, Sean, that actually everybody outside of Michaela is doing this test with somebody else. So you can kind of see somebody in the peripheral of each of these ladies' screens, which would help pace you. Ellie Turner done first, got to the rower at about 323. And now here and comes Annie and Thorsauter done second. She's at the rower at 335 but unbroken 120. Sam Briggs is done, and Michaela Norman just after her. All four ladies, unbroken 120 wall balls. Super impressive. Briggs and Norman getting to the rowers at about three minutes, 45 seconds. So now just 120 calories on the rower. Just 120 yeah. calories. I'd love to know what uh, pace these ladies are pulling at. Ellie Turner was first to the rower. She got there again about 22 seconds ahead of Briggs and Norman and just a couple seconds ahead, about 10 seconds ahead of Annie Thor's daughter. Ellie just has those really long, kind of controlled, slower strokes where it looks like, you know, if you go strokes per minute, somebody like Michaela or even Annie Thor's daughter, they seem to be uh, pulling at a, at a quicker pace where Ellie's able to just hold that really relaxed return. Approaching the five minute mark here again, took about three and change for all these women to get through those 120 wall balls. Ellie Turner was the fastest, got to the rower at 323. Uh, Annie Thoris shot her behind her at 335, and then both Briggs and Norman hopped on the rower at 345. So Ellie Turner in the upper left was your leader. And again, Sean, this, you know, you know, the wall balls are tough, but now it's really about how much are you willing to suffer? And if you think about somebody like Sam and, you know, the marathon row at the games uh, years back, we know Sam Briggs is 100% willing to suffer on that rower. I think Sam Briggs would look at this test as a warm up for something else. <laughs> I, I... I've seen her do stuff like this as a warm up. <laughs> but it just goes to, show you that the top times in this test are going to come from athletes who don't put the wall ball down. Yep. Yeah, I mean, to think that even one or two breaks could set you back enough to be, you know, bottom 50 or, you know, worse on this, on this test. Yeah, you fall down the leaderboard quite a bit in just a matter of a couple seconds. Yep. So Ellie Turner in the upper left, looks like she's continuing to lead. Again, once that uh, white bar in the calories box above her video fills in all the way to the right, she will be done. Six minutes, 12 seconds gone by right now in test number three. So three athletes from Europe and then Ellie Turner, the lone athlete from Oceana. I have to say, Sean, to think that these ladies already have half of their calories, or near half their calories done, I would probably still be on maybe my set of 80 wall balls if I was lucky um, and I'm and I'm being honest here you know if I can hold 15 a minute that would be really good for me so to think that these ladies are almost done with you know probably upwards of 200 repetitions at this point and you compare the styles between Michaela Norman in the upper right and uh, Ellie Turner in the upper left and you mentioned this before uh, the pace on the rower much faster from Norman but it does look like Ellie Turner might be getting more power Definitely, that's exactly what that is. So, you know, you can think of it, um, think of you're told to lift a thousand pounds. You can either do it uh, 10 times by lifting a hundred pounds, or you can lift, you know, one pound a thousand times. And so which way do you want to do it? And different athletes will favor different ways. It obviously it takes more power uh, to, do, to do heavier weight, fewer reps, and that's what Ellie's doing right there. And it looks like Turner continues to lead with Sam Briggs in second, and then Michaela Norman and Annie Thorstarter look like they're about neck and neck. But it was Turner again who had a, about a 12 second head start on Annie Thorstarter once the two of them got to the rower, and then Briggs and Norman uh, got 
there at three minutes and 45 seconds. So Turner had about a 22 second head start on them on the rower. But as we know, Sam Briggs is an athlete who can easily make that up. Right. So almost eight minutes gone by now. And we are in the back half of test number three, the 120 calories on the rower. You also notice how far in Ellie, Ellie Turner gets that handle to the flywheel. So she's really, you know, she's making not just a, a slower pull, but a more powerful pull by lengthening out the stroke. Ellie Turner now looking like she is in the final few calories of this 120 calorie row. Norman and Thoris' daughter still look to be about neck and neck and Briggs has a slight edge on the two of them. So Briggs in second with Norman and Thoris' daughter fighting you can, for third. Yeah, and you can really see Michaela must be closing in because you see her, her moving over to those shorter, even choppier strokes, which means, you know, for, for me at least, that's the end. That's the sprint to the finish. That's when you probably have, you know, 20 calories, maybe a little more, a little less left. Yeah. Any second now probably for Ellie Turner as we pass uh, the nine-minute mark. And it looks like she's just about done. And, and Turner is, is in done. at 9.06. <laughs> that was so impressive. And now Briggs is in just eight seconds back. So she was able to shave about 12 seconds off of that lead, but just not enough to catch Ellie Turner. And Nikayla that leaves Norman, Norman who done. just finished at 9.19. And now Annie Thoris daughter in at 9.25. Super impressive from all those ladies. What a tight race. Here are your top scores in test number three by Continent. Ellie Turner, who we just saw, 9.06. In fact, that's the best time in the world. Sam Briggs, she had the top score in Europe at 9.14. Haley Adams, a great performance at 9.26 to lead North America. Uh, Dinah Switch from Africa at 9.50. Andrea Pinheiro out of South America at 10 minutes. And Ksenia Trubiskaya from Asia, 10 minutes 14 seconds. And we were talking about this uh, test earlier. Not only do you have to go unbroken, but if you're even thinking about pacing this, you've already taken out any chance that you have of finishing towards the top. Right. I think the motto was unbroken and go for broke yeah. <laughs> is really what it comes down to. You know, 19 seconds um, separated first from fourth there. Uh, and really that just came down to the row because all those ladies mm -hmm. went unbroken. So really, uh, you know, uh, um, you know, it came down to the row and your ability yeah. to hold a really good pace there. We didn't watch Haley Adams uh, in that throwdown that we just uh, showed you, but no surprise that she's the top time uh, in North America because like Sam Briggs has an engine and knows yep. how to suffer. Yep, exactly. At 926, so she just missed that matchup. This was, a, like you said, Sean, this was a really great test for her. And especially if we look at what the next test is, which is mm -hmm. an absolute strength test, she needed to do well in this one. And that's exactly what she did. And another woman we have not talked a lot about at all this year, but it wasn't that long ago when she was on the podium at the CrossFit Games, Laura Horvath good enough for seventh in Europe and was just a second back of Haley Adams time at 927. Uh, yeah, so this is crazy. She was just two seconds behind Annie T, mm -hmm. uh, you know, who had a great score in that event, but was still, like you said, seventh in Europe to think that that, that just two seconds separated where Annie fell and then where she was, still a really impressive effort from Laura Horvath and she's looking good through these yeah. first three tests. Well, let's move on to test number four and this one was uh, pretty simple. It is just a four rep max front squat and you have 20 minutes to get it done and when you look at this one you know you can start the clock whenever you want and that kind of changes how you strategize this definitely i think your more intelligent and more seasoned athletes are going to do one maybe two attempts because as you said sean you can warm up until the minute you decide to hit mm -hmm. record on that video so really you wouldn't need to do more than one Max two, and I yeah. even judged Tommy on this yesterday. He warmed up right to where he wanted to be. He hit one, he rested about five, seven minutes. He went for a second attempt. He only made the first rep, but there was just no reason to do more right. than that. Well, let's take a look at uh, some of the notable lifts that we saw from some of the bigger names and then some of the best scores that we saw uh, from around the world. And we'll start with the woman we just mentioned, and that's uh, Haley Adams. Great result on test three. Here on test number four, 220 pounds for four. 
That's good for 514th, and we knew this was going to be a weakness for her. And, and again, you, if you watch her squat here, she is struggling under this load. Definitely. But, you know, in, in respect to Haley, 220 pounds, at the Games in 2019, she could not clean that first bar at 215. Mm -hmm. uh, last year, she did a one rep max at 230. So the fact that she did four reps at 220, I think we do have to give her a nod. She is definitely working on her weakness, which is strength. Katrin Davis' daughter, 227 for four. That is good enough for 132nd place in Europe. And 227 pounds, nothing to shake a stick at. But, you know, Katrin is somebody that I, th I think of as not that long ago being one of the best lifters in the sport. So I'm actually a little surprised to only see 227 from Katrin. But I love how upright her torso is through all of these lifts. David Zotter, again, uh, with 132nd place in Europe. Uh, not the best result, obviously, for her, but in no danger of falling out of the top 60. Now, Annie Thoris Zotter, also from Europe, four pounds better than Catherine David Zotter. Thoris Zotter gets 117th place with a four rep max of 231 pounds. And I got to give it to Annie. You know, <laughs> this is where I am in. Um, you know, it's it's a favor goes to me having shorter limbs, and Annie has really long legs. Uh, so the 231 is great for Annie T, in my opinion. And in a lot of these maximal lifts, you see the form obviously start to break down a little bit. This is right. a competition, though, and these athletes are willing to push that. Uh, when they get into the situation. Right, I think, Sean, when we're talking about a max effort, form is not going to stay perfect. That is the nature of a max effort. Kristen Holta with 253. Yeah, four rep for her at 253. That's good enough for 26. Now, that is a great result for uh, Kristen Holta. Right, and especially when you think about it, she's only about 130 pounds. Look at that third rep. She almost lost it, and that makes that fourth rep so much harder. Really impressive to see her pull off that fourth rep after almost missing the third. Let's go to Emma Carey now. 16 years old, 200. 57 pounds, good enough for 46. And the thing you always talk about with these teenage athletes is do they have that you know, max lift strength? Right. And Clearly she does. <laughs> right, and we don't expect them to at 16 years old, but the fact that she's lifting 257, and look at how fast she is out of the bottom of that squat, super impressive from Emma Carey. From a newcomer in the individual division, possibly this year to someone we've seen quite a bit, Cara Saunders in Oceana, sixth place with a four rep max of 265 pounds. I love how upright Car is able to keep that torso on all of these squats. Super impressive, but not surprising to see her squat that kind of weight. And now another teenager. And you said yesterday, Mal O'Brien is for real. You've got to believe it after seeing this. 267 for her. 28th place, and she's just 17 years old. So impressive. And and just like Emma Carey, look at how fast she is out of the bottom of that squat. Look at, I love the oscillation of the bar. It means she's got some power as she's driving that bar up. Super impressive. Mal O'Brien. 20th, 20th place. 20th place in that test. Then we move on to Alexandra Buznova from Asia. She had the top lift in that con at 267 pounds as well. She actually looks like she's still on her warm-up set right here, Sean. I mean, no struggle, especially when you compare it to some of those other ladies. And finally, the top score out of Oceana, no surprise, it's Tia Toomey or four reps at 282. And again, her form breaking down, but competition, she guts through it and she gets the four lifts. I mean, you could even say it's actually impressive to see her get that many lifts when the form is is that kind of broken down right from the get-go. Now, she squatted 313 for one rep in uh, last year's uh, test at, at the 2020 game. So super impressive to not be, you know, that many pounds off for four. Let's take a look now at the top lifts that we saw in test number four, and they come from athletes who represent four different continents. 21-year-old Gabriella Moratti, who finished 47th in the World Wide Open. 22-year-old Morgan Reynolds. Masters athlete Annecy Caldas, 43 years old, out of Europe. And then 33-year-old Lee Kiros from Africa. All of these lifts above 300 pounds, and we start with Gabriella Moratti from South America. 302. 
so impressive that we have four ladies that squatted over 300 pounds. When you think last year, one rep max, only one athlete, one female, that being Tia, Tia Tumi or squatted over 300 pounds. And Gabriella Moratti, still young, 21 years old. That takes us to Morgan Reynolds out of North America. 305, she's 22. <laughs> 22. <laughs> I mean, I, I could barely deadlift 305, much less front squat it. Look how upright she stays in all these squats. Wow. Anna C. Caldas, out of Europe, 43 years old, 312 pounds. And look at this, Sean, I love it. No belt. Why, why belt up for 312 pounds, right? Anna is actually an athlete that I competed against uh, in the California Regional back in 2015. Fellow Masters athlete, love that she's still competing. Impressive lift for Anna, she called us, but it was Lee Kuros out of Africa, 315 pounds on the bar, and she hits it for a set of four. Great squat right there. No question wow. on the depth from this angle. I mean, just to have that bar sitting on your shoulders, you know, much less squatting it for this amount of time is so unimaginable for me. Fought that last rep a little bit, but it will count. So 315 for Lee Kiros is your top score. Well, here are the top scores by continent. We just saw four of them. The other two, Oceana, Tia Tumi Orr at 282 pounds. And then in Asia, it's Yashi Wang, 276. But we have yet to get a video submitted from her. So these are the top recorded scores in test uh, number four. And for the full leaderboards, go to games.crossfit. Dot com. And it's funny, in Test 4, you expect to see names that you haven't seen before because that's kind of a specialist event. Definitely. Strong athletes, but Tia Tumi Orr is the exception to that rule. Definitely, and we saw it with those top lifters. Mm -hmm. uh, we knew that this would be a little bit more of a, of a specialty event for a lot of these ladies. To see T Tia be so competitive in this event, to put up 282 pounds for four reps, again, this just shows why she is the four-time reigning champ. And we saw it with uh, Haley Adams, and we also saw it with Carrie Pierce. She, Carrie knows that the events like this are her weakness, and that played out uh, in test number four for her. Right. She did 231 pounds, uh, which was good for 307th place. Mm -hmm. That bumped her from first place to 33rd place overall uh, after this, these four tests. And, you know, again, this isn't going to keep her out of making the semifinals, but this is definitely something where Carrie needs to work on this 307th from you know the the third fittest woman last year I just would expect to see a little bit more at this point one test remains uh, here's where we stand as far as the top five are concerned continent uh, by continent we'll start in Africa where Michelle Baznet leads the way with uh, 31 total points right now remember these scores can be adjusted so this is all unofficial at this point and the top 30 women from Africa moving on to the semifinals and over in Asia it's Alexandra Buzanova at uh, 24 points as there are four Russians inside of the top five. Over in Europe, how about Laura Horvath leading the way? 11 points up on Gabriella Magala right now. Impressive performance so far uh, from Laura Horvath in North America, where the 120 top women move on to semifinals. Emma Carey and Mal O'Brien, the two teenagers right now separated by five points. And then it's Danny Spiegel, Brooke Wells, and Amanda Barnhart. Over in Oceana, no surprise on your top two there. Tia Toomey Orr leading the way, uh, followed by Cara Saunders. And then another games veteran, Maddie Sturt, is in third. And then in South America, where the top 30 women advance to the semifinals, Lari Kuna out of Brazil has a pair of Argentinians trying to track her down. And Melina Rodriguez is in second, and then Sasha Nieves who is in third, but I, I know we are hammering this point here, but Emma Carey and Mal O'Brien, I think are probably the stories so far of the quarterfinals. It's really hard not to hammer this mm -hmm. story. So these are two ladies who did very well in the open, but we know that notoriously the test of the open is very different than the subsequent tests that happen in the road to qualify for the games. 
Both of these ladies are veteran competitors in that they have competed at the games as teens. And not only that, they have gone head to head with each other in 2019. What is so impressive to me though, is now that the test has shifted, if we look at the four things that we've seen so far, Test one, speed and accuracy. Mm -hmm. Test two, volume. Test three, pain threshold. Uh, test four, absolute strength. These are the two ladies sitting on top of the leaderboard for North America, which is chock full of games veteran athletes. So mm -hmm. really hard not to keep your eyes, have your eyes on these two ladies and be completely amazed by their performances. We have just one test remaining. Other than those two, what has stood out the most to you over these first four tests? I think, um, again, I think this is a very comprehensive test mm -hmm. so far. And so I think when we're looking at this final test, we have uh, a high skill in the snatch. And then again, it's going to come down to speed and accuracy when you think about the burpee box jump. So to me, this is a very thorough test. And I feel like at the end of this, if these two ladies are still on top, they are very much mm -hmm. the real deal. And whoever comes out and qualifies for the semifinals very much should be there because to me, this has been a very comprehensive test uh, of, of who should move on. Yeah, we should have an exciting finish to the quarterfinals on uh, the women's side. That's gonna do it for this edition of Game Central. We'll be back in a little bit to recap uh, day number two on the men's side as Neil Maddox will join me. So stick around for that. For Andy Sakamoto, I'm Sean Woodland. Thanks for joining us here on this special quarterfinals edition of Game Central.